Uh, welcome back to the class. Uh, now we will talk about uh, what happens to the water after a rainfall event, how it flows on the ground and what kind of geological feature it leaves behind as it flows on the ground. Uh, we will look at the term drainage basin and different kind of drainage patterns. Uh, runoff is a term used to indicate the water which is flowing on the surface of earth after precipitation. Uh, so the rainfall event uh, that brings uh, water from environment from cloud, it falls on the ground and then the water which flows on the surface of earth is called rain rainfall. And there are these five different factors that controls uh, the runoff uh, which, uh, uh, which flows on the, on the surface. Uh, one is intensity and duration of rainfall, amount of water already in the soil, nature of the surface material, uh, slope of the land, and extent and type of vegetation. Mm. And there are these different terms here uh, that is related to uh, the early and later stages of rainfall. So in the early stages, when the rainfall is started, it starts at unconfined thin sheets of uh, across thin sheets across hill slopes. So it is uh, unconfined; it is not confined into a channel. That is the idea. So it just flows uh, arbitrarily on the ground. And the very first channel, or or the thread of current in, current in tiny channels, those are called as rills. Flow develops threads of current in tiny channel called rills and rills will converge into gullies and gullies will converge into streams and rivers that carry water from broad areas. Uh, so I'll just do a, a small schematic here. So uh, suppose this is a certain landscape and suppose this is your cloud and this is your rainfall event. Okay. So rainfall will happen and then as the water falls on the ground it will start uh, flowing so this is going to be called the very first one uh, you have a network like this network like this it will form so these the first ones will be called as rills right and when they will converge the second one will be called as gullies and then finally it will become converged into a river so this is your actual river okay. so you have all of these different rills and gullies this looks like a leaf yeah. so it will all just based on the slope how the slope on the ground is uh, all these gullies and stream uh, rails will eventually converge into this river okay this is what it will look like just I'm um, doing this uh, just a random formation and that it is random because it largely depend on mm, the slope of the ground and this whole entire ground is called as drainage basin so this entire area that contributes runoff to a particular river system, then that entire area will be called as drainage basin. So this entire, the idea of this entire ba drainage basin is that landscape which will contribute water to a single river system, which is this, and, and most likely this river will run through the middle or center of this uh, drainage basin. So you can have a, another drainage basin right next to it and if there is another uh, rainfall event here uh, then the, it will also have another river system here so this is drainage basin and here the slope is such that all the water that falls here uh, will converge to this another river system okay and what will happen right in the middle here so right here where these two so I suppose if I just draw it so suppose this is your that border line between these two 
drainage basin okay so if uh, if there is any cloud if there is a water that falls on this uh, area and this one is called as divide because it divides these two drainage basins so this is your drainage basin two so you can call it db2 and this is drainage basin one so this drainage basin is contributing all its water to this river one and this another drainage basin is contributing all the water to this another river uh, called river two so whatever water that falls right at the interface where these two drainage basin meets that water will split evenly around these two over these two drainage basin uh, so that is the idea so we learned about these three terms here uh, first these different network of uh, of channels that contribute water to the river so these are rills and then gullies and then eventually they all converge into a river and the landscape that uh, contributes water to a particular river is called as drainage basin and the area or the landscape which is right at the interface of these two different drainage basin is called as divide and if there is any rainfall event right around this divide area then that water that runoff will be split over these two different drainage basin okay. and all of these are so randomly distributed because of the slope so remember this term slope slope is a term which is used to indicate the rise against run okay, so let me draw this, try to draw this again so suppose so this one is called as theta which is a slope so this is your uh, uh, height and this is your length so how much uh, uh, is increase in the elevation as you move in this direction so that is what is indicated by slope or gradient uh, gradient is another term that is used for slope so slope or gradient okay so they are the same term uh, or they have same meaning the change in elevation uh, with distance this is what it divides a drainage basin separated by divides or the land area that contribute water to a river system uh, now go back to this uh, uh, runoff uh, so we will just quickly talk about this uh, the factor uh, that controls uh, uh, the formation uh, runoff so these are the factors so runoff so suppose this is your ground and suppose rainfall happens so this is rainfall and then this will be called as runoff okay and then there is another term which is called as infiltration infiltration means the absorb absorption of this runoff water inside the ground so that is called as infiltration rainfall is the process where the water falls from the sky onto the ground and runoff is the process where the water flows on the surface and infiltration is the process where water is absorbed inside the ground so every ground has some capacity right to absorb water uh, just like you can think about a sponge uh, you can pour some water on it it will absorb it and if you keep pouring water the water will start to overflow the sponge would not be able to absorb any more water so just like that um, uh, the ground surface has certain um, uh, absorption capacity right so that that's why the first factor uh, it relates to how much water is already there so first one is uh, intensity and duration of rainfall that how long the rainfall has been happening so the first one is intensity uh, and duration and uh, so that indicates that how much uh, rain occurred and how long it happened for how long the rainfall event continued so intensity is measured in terms of millimeter per hour 
and duration is your hour so if you multiply these two terms you will get how much rainfall occurred right so that is how you calculate how much rain has occurred by multiplying the intensity and uh, the duration over which the rainfall has occurred and the intensity is very easy to measure so during any rainfall event you can leave a bucket outside and see how much water has filled into this bucket you can measure this height and you know the time over which uh, the rainfall has occurred so that will tell you how much rain has occurred in, in this time or in this location so that was first factor intensity and duration that is going to control the runoff uh, and then second one is uh, how much uh, water was already present there right amount of water already in the soil so since I said earlier, um, every soil or ground surface has certain capacity. If the ground surface is dry, it's completely dry, then it will very quickly absorb lots of water and there would not be a lot of runoff because uh, the water has higher capacity or ability to absorb water. So that would not leave a lot of runoff on the surface. On the other hand, if the water, if the rainfall has just happened, uh, about an hour ago or earlier during the day and then another rainfall event happened later in the evening <coughs> then the water is likely already uh, wet uh, sorry not water the ground is already wet and um, there is already some water absorbed in there so that will leave uh, only a little bit of more space for water to fill into the ground so the absorption would not be as high so that will leave more water to flow on the surface so that will increase the runoff and if the if the if the soil is completely saturated then then the runoff will be even higher so as the rainfall continues that's why we see the event of of uh, um, of uh, flooding right that um, after the rainfall event the the ground starts to absorb the water and it will absorb it after over some time and if the rainfall continues beyond that time when the ground can absorb water then the water will start flowing in the form of runoff and then the volume of runoff will continue to grow because the ground can no longer absorb any water so that will eventually turn into flooding if the rainfall continues for even longer duration is it and the nature of the surface material this is another important one so think about urbanized area like in the city where there is a lot of paving or the ground is covered by some impermeable material like um, a road surface or the patio uh, in our houses or the front yard where you have a, a impermeable surface some kind of cement uh, cement surface uh, so in those cases also the run runoff will be much higher because the, the surface does not allow the water to infiltrate into the ground so think about uh, this so if you cover this surface with uh, right with uh, some material some solid material then whatever rainfall will fall it will not be absorbed it will just simply flow on the ground so runoff so the runoff will increase as we have more paved surface uh, on the ground uh, so which is very common in the urbanized area compared to the rural area where the residential density is much smaller compared to the uh, town uh, or a city uh, so the infiltration is much higher in the rural area compared to the city in the city the runoff will be much uh, higher or stronger compared to infiltration because of much more um, area being covered or paved on the surface uh, slope of the land uh, this is uh, another important factor so think about uh, the slope just like i said earlier it indicates uh, the, the the elevation so think about these two uh, surface right uh, so this is where the <coughs> the rainfall occur on this ground so based on the slope so and then there is another uh, one here right so, this one, right so think about this one this one is certainly has higher slope compared to this surface so whatever rain will happen on this surface it will just run off very quickly 
away from the site of uh, rainfall. So there is not much time left for infiltration because the runoff will be so rapid due to the slope. Over here, on the other hand, the runoff will be relatively uh, slower because of much gentle slope on the ground. So that will allow more time for infiltration because the water here, runoff water will stay for a little bit longer compared to this ground on the surface and that will allow uh, the ground to absorb more water. So in this case, the runfall runoff um, will be much faster and there will be less in infiltration. Over here in this case, the infiltration is relatively more and the runoff is relatively slower or weaker on the surface. Um, extent and type of veg vegetation. So that is another factor that controls how much water will be absorbed in the ground. So you can imagine that uh, extent uh, how much area is open and the vegetation, the root of the vegetation, that has the capacity to also uh, hold the water. So suppose you have a vegetation here and it has some root system below the ground. So as this water falls, some of these water molecules are trapped around this, right? So that will allow uh, more infiltration to occur and less rainfall due to the presence of vegetation because uh, this will hold uh, more water in the root area. This we already talked about running water. So this is a schematic here about drainage basin, just like we talked earlier. You have all of these different uh, network of streams, but they are all converging towards an, uh, a common river system right in the middle of the of the drainage basin and then drainage divide is that uh, landscape or is the interface between two different drainage basins so if a rainfall occur like you see these arrows this indicates the direction in which water is flowing in these two different drainage basin mm, so right over the divide the the water is splits over these two different uh, drainage basin over these two different drainage basin here is a zoom in that what happens near the divide the water is splits and you will have rills and gullies gullies are more uh, developed form of channels rills are uh, more uh, preliminary uh, earlier phases of uh, these uh, network of streams which are forming in this drainage basin Uh, now we will talk about uh, the life cycle of, of any river system. So river, it is starts uh, from some head water and then it flows towards uh, the ocean because we know that ocean, we consider that it is a zero elevation and everything above or below relative to ocean, we measure the elevation of any ground surface. Uh, so ocean, so we also use the term mean sea level uh, which indicates that the the ocean is always considered as uh, as zero elevation and any landscape uh, elevation is measured relative to uh, the elevation of ocean so anything we say it is the 10 meters or 10 feet in elevation that is in in relative to the 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 elevation of ocean which is considered at at zero uh, so here we will we can divide the life or the flow of river from its origin all the way before it converges into the ocean system in three different um, stages so these three zones or stages of any river system is first one is called a sediment production second one is called sediment transport and third one is called a sediment deposition and it is all controlled or defined in terms of sediment that if the river is producing the sediment or if it is transporting the sediment or if it is depositing the sediment so these are the three zones in which you can divide uh, the life or the the entire um, river system so as you can see in this uh, in this schematic in the headwater headwater is the zone where the river originates and this is uh, you can see the elevation or the slope in this landscape is very steep you can see there are uh, steep mountains and hills and that will provide a lot of energy to the water which is flowing so we will look uh, a little bit later that the slope 
is a very important factor when we are looking at the flow uh, flow of water uh, so slope uh, like we, we discussed earlier you can think about this and then there is another ground here which is much gentle slope so in this uh, the water will be more rapidly flowing right it will have a lot of energy it will have a lot of velocity uh, but over here it will be a gentle uh, stream of water uh, very slowly uh, flowing down this ground so that is the difference and that is coming due to the slope of the ground uh, so you can see here in the earlier part of the river system uh, the slope of the landscape over which the river is flowing is very high it is um, very steep so the water will flow very rapidly and when the water will flow very rapidly it will have a lot of energy to cause damage to the surrounding landscape and so as it is flowing it is causing this erosion uh, it is damaging the surrounding landscape so we will have uh, some of these here okay so we will go more in detail uh, just let's uh, talk about these three zones first um, so i was talking about how due to lot of energy in the earlier stage of river due to uh, a steep slope on the landscape the water will have lots of energy due to this lots of uh, due to having lots of energy it will cause erosion it will have lot more energy to cause damage to the surrounding landscape so as it is causing uh, erosion it is producing a lot of sediment so that is why the earlier the first stage of the river system is called a sediment production where erosion is domin dominant and lots of um, uh, sediments are produced as you can look into this second stage of the river system which is called a zone of transportation here the landscape has a much gentle slope here you can see this here how the elevation is quickly changing in the first stage but as you go in the second stage here it is showing the elevation is changing very gradually as we are moving down a stream and so that will reduce uh, the energy carried by this water or the stream so it would not be able to cause as much erosion but it still has enough energy to carry the sediment that it has produced in the first stage of river system so now in this second stage it would not be able to produce any sediment but it will only carry the sediment so that's why it is called as zone of transportation and then it will come to this last and final stage before it falls into ocean and that is called a zone of deposition so in this stage now you can see the slope is almost gone uh, the landscape is almost flat and uh, water wouldn't have almost uh, negligible energy to even carry the sediment it has produced so now it will start dropping this sediment in this landscape right before it falls into the ocean and this is all these three stages are controlled by the elevation or slope which translate into the energy of the river system as it is flowing downstream on this landscape so once again here zone of sediment production where most water and sediments is derived it is headwater region headwater region is the where um, a river originates or it forms uh, transportation through the channel networks occurs via trunk streams river slope and the entire body of water sediment accumulates forming a delta uh, so here this last point river slope and the entire body of water sediment accumulates forming a delta so it is talking about this last stage which is zone of deposition so the ocean which is relatively calm compared to um, the 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 flow of river stream so it enters uh, it's a very very large volume of water so when it falls into this ocean it already has lost uh, lost its energy and it is depositing all of its water uh, all of its sediment so that is how it creates this uh, zone of deposition and it is also called as delta uh, as it is um, uh, sediment accumulates forming a delta so the la uh, the delta is the upstream region right before the water falls into a stationary water which may be in some cases ocean or gulf um, so right you can think about gulf of mexico 
or the water which falls into Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean. So right before it falls in there, it forms a region called as Delta, which is a, a region where it deposits all the sediments carried by the, by the river system. Here are the four uh, ty different types of network of streams from drainage system with distinctive pattern. Uh, dendritic, it is highly, so these are the four types here, the schematic. One is dendritic, which is highly irregular, and it again follows the slope. So what, however, the slope of the landscape changes, the stream will just simply follows that um, change in the slope. So it always, the water flows from higher slope to lower slope. So it just simply follows uh, that uh, distinct uh, uh, change in slope over the landscape. So this one is called dendritic, which uh, if you can look at it, it just looks like the growth of uh, nerve system in our body or that's how the, the tree grows on the ground. Another one, this one is uh, called as trellis. Dendritic uh, uh, rectangular. So this one is called as rectangular where the water uh, is flowing on a very uh, smooth uh, or, or flat bedrock, but uh, there are some fractures. Uh, we will see later, uh, maybe in the next chapter, that how every rock has a certain uh, distinct um, fracture or, or cleavage. This is something we discussed earlier too, right? In the in the in the second chapter in the rock that uh, there is a failure plane in different rocks and this is what this stream network will take advantage of uh, when whatever be the plane of failure on these rock uh, on this bedrock the river will simply flow along that it will be much easier for river to erode on this uh, on that plane of failure because those are the weaker zone in the entire body of rock so the water will first erode in those weaker part and then as it erodes it makes those river uh, network uh, and which is called as rectangular pa um, pattern and a similar one is a trellis pattern so trellis pattern has this dominant uh, mm, failure uh, plane or, or dominant uh, river stream and then there are some tributaries coming out and those are following these secondary uh, plane of failure or the, uh, or, or the second weaker uh, plane of failure in this bedrock. Uh, so these are called as trellis. Uh, and then the fourth one is radial pattern. And this is unique uh, for a volcanic or, or a hilly region where when the water falls, it just simply uh, flows radially from the uh, from the point of rainfall event uh, where the rainfall occurred it just radially spread out uh, equally in every direction because you can look at the slope is almost same in every direction so the water will just simply split equally in radial direction from the point of um, uh, rainfall event so these are the four types of um, uh, stream pattern as the water flows on the ground depending on the the nature of the rock or the or the slope of the landscape it will uh, form these four different types of uh, stream networks uh, what happens to water as it runs off earth's surface it first form unconfined sheets convert concentrated into rills then converts converge into gullies and eventually streams and rivers and what are the four basic drainage patterns dendritic radial rectangular and trellis so see these are the you know short answer type question that is something may come up in, in your midterm exam what causes is uh, what factors cause the stream flow to change uh, so first let's uh, uh, look at uh, the different type of stream based on the velocity with which water is flowing so there are two different types of stream system based on how fast the stream is moving. The first one is called laminar, uh, in which the water is gently flowing on the surface. Uh, there is no uh, rapid motion, there is no turbidity, or there is not much disturbance in the water as it is flowing. On the other hand, uh, it is uh, the other stream system is called as turbulent, which is uh, most common where the streams are flowing 
uh, rapidly and there is a strong swirling motion there is a lot of disturbance in the stream uh, so this is more common it is called as turbulent and the other one uh, is called as laminar increasing flow velocity increases turbidity uh, so the turbidity is the term used to indicate how much uh, dirty the water is how much uh, uh, sediment is mixed up in the water so turbidity uh, sometimes you can think about if you go on the beach if the water is quiet uh, it's very clean on the other hand when there is a strong uh, wave action then that wave will tend to mix a lot of sand in the water so that will increase the tur turbidity or the dirtiness of the water how dirty the water is and that also going to control the visibility in the water right if the water is quiet if it is clean then you can see to a much farther distance <coughs> so increasing flow velocity increases turbidity so in the turbulent uh, uh, flow the turbidity will, turbidity will be higher in the case of laminar flow the turbidity will turbidity uh, is, is relatively low so here are the two examples this one on the left is a laminar flow where you can see the stream is gently flowing on the landscape and here is a another example from grand canyon uh, you can see the water is very rapid uh, and it is it has a lot of mixing in the water uh, so this is an extreme example of turbulent flow uh, and now we will look at the factor that controls the flow velocity what are the factor that makes a flow laminar or turbulent uh, so the flow velocity depends on channel slope so the first factor the most important one is the slope or gradient of the landscape and so just like we saw earlier uh, depending on the slope or gradient of the landscape the water will uh, flow rapidly or it will flow uh, relatively slowly so in this case uh, when you have higher uh, slope uh, you will have uh, turbulent flow right. and in this case you will have laminar flow where you have uh, a gentle slope or, or not so a steep um, a gradient or slope on the landscape another one is channel size as you increase the channel size you can fit more water it will have more energy so that is all coming from the inertia the idea of inertia if you uh, put a lot of volume of water it will have more energy channel roughness is uh, the only factor that uh, slows uh, the uh, the flow of water so uh, think about this ground if it is a, uh, a a rough ground like if there is a lot of roughness on the ground so that will likely to give resistance to the flow uh, which is uh, flowing on the water so the runoff will not flow very smoothly so that uh, roughness will tend to retard the flow or slow the flow down uh, as it goes down a stream so the roughness is another factor amount of water flowing in the channel uh, so this is also a big factor that amount of more the water is there more uh, rapid it will be right so you can think about that uh, uh, if you uh, open the tap in the in the, in the uh, you know just just like a tap water when you open it a little bit the water is uh, is flowing very gently it is falling but as you keep opening the tap water lot and lot of water is start falling through this tap and it will look uh, more um, uneven uh, more rapid it has a much faster flow rate and it will start splashing everywhere on the ground so that is how the water as you increase the volume of water it will its flow rate will change from laminar to turbulent so these are the four factors i want you guys to memorize this uh, the flow velocity depends on the channel slope the the slope is the most important one and then the size of the channel or the width of the channel uh, the third one is channel roughness this is the only factor that slows it down well whereas the other three factor as you increase them then the flow velocity will also increase on the other hand the channel roughness is the only factor as you increase the roughness the flow velocity will decrease a uh, couple of terms uh, that i want you guys to memorize gradient uh, is a vertical drop over a specified distance uh, varies from a stream to a stream and over a single stream's length uh, 
A steeper gradient provides more energy for flow. Uh, shape, size, and roughness of channel affect the amount of friction between channel and water. Uh, so friction, roughness, same term. Uh, higher friction creates turbulent and slower flow. Uh, discharge is the volume of water flowing past a certain point in a given in unit of time. So this is an important term. I want you guys to remember this, memorize this. Discharge is the volume of water flowing past a certain point in a given unit of time. So you can measure, uh, so just like in the case, if a stream is, is, is flowing, same. So if this is a stream, and if you hold a bucket here in the, in the path of a stream, then you can collect some water here, right? So you will you can measure that how much water you have collected in in ten minutes or five minutes, and you can divide that volume of water in the bucket divided by the time it took you to collect that much water, and that is called as discharge, right? Uh, it is denoted by a big Q. So volume of water divided by time, it is called as discharge. Uh, there are two terms related to discharge, intermittent streams and ephemeral streams. So these are the two different types of streams that is defined based on when there is water, how long during a year do they remain wet. Uh, intermittent streams only flow during wet periods, which is... Uh, uh, your rainfall season. So for uh, Florida, it is mostly from August till November. Uh, you have you get a lot of rain, and these intermittent streams uh, will have water only during this time. On the other hand, ephemeral streams are those streams which carry water after heavy rainfall. So these are the ephemeral streams which go dry is soon after the rainfall event is over. Okay, so these will remain uh, wet during an extremely uh, heavy rainfall event. So that rainfall event will fill this stream and the slope will move all this water away from the stream. Um, so so this, this ephemeral streams will dry out after uh, a rainfall event is over. Uh, so there is another important term called longitudinal profile. Uh, this indicates how the uh, slope of a river uh, or, or the landscape over which the uh, it is flowing is changing. Uh, gradient decreases from head to mouth. Uh, uh, reduction in sediment size. Overall shape is concave curve uh, with roger irregularities. So here it is one profile. So this is what uh, the longitudinal profile looks like. So this shows how the slope of the landscape is changing over which the river is flowing. Uh, so you can see this is the headwater where the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the, the river originates. Uh, you can see this is a very hilly mountain region. Uh, so the slope is very high as um, or the elevation is very high and as you uh, go downstream along this landscape the elevation continue to decline so this elevation here it is measured against the mean sea level right so against the ocean level this elevation is measured so as you go downstream this uh, elevation will continue to drop uh, until you get to the to the to the ocean right right at the ocean the elevation is zero because the ocean is considered as uh, as a as a standard as a, as a zero uh, elevation uh, region, right? So in the this is the head where the river originates. Uh, the the gradient elevation, um, sorry, the slope is very steep, uh, but as it goes downstream, you can see uh, from the profile the 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 slope will become uh, more gentle and as it gets closer to the ocean it is starts to become almost flat so just by looking at this longitudinal profile you can predict uh, the region which will be the sediment production sediment transportation and sediment deposition right so this is the importance of 
of knowing what is the longitudinal profile of the landscape over which the river is flowing because this can help you predict where you will see a lot of uh, um, erosion or sediment production in which region you will see a lot of sediment uh, uh, transportation and less erosion and where you will see a lot of deposition of these sediments Uh, so this is just uh, uh, something for you to, uh, to think about how the water will flow in the Mississippi River compared to the flow velocity of a Rocky Mountain stream. Uh, so of course in the Mississippi River it will be more gentle, more laminar uh, given how the landscape is relatively flat compared to the Rocky Mountain stream where uh, the elevation is very high, the slope is very steep. Uh, so that will uh, provide a lot of energy to the river stream so the flow will be highly turbulent it will cause a lot of damage to the surrounding landscape produce a lot of sediment uh, so this is how you can make the distinction in the flow between uh, the mississippi river and the f stream which is flowing in the ro uh, rocky mountain just to review uh, what factors cause the stream flow to change gradient channel size and shape roughness and discharge or volume of the water how do streams erode transport and deposit sediment uh, like i discussed earlier as um, the 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 river water or the stream water it is flowing down a stream uh, in the earlier stage it has a lot of energy so it will cause a lot of uh, uh, damage to the surrounding landscape uh, and it will pick up a lot of sediment as it flowing down a stream uh, hydraulic force can also cut bedrock so bedrock is uh, the the landscape or just like the term indicates it is the bed over which the river is flowing uh, so the river bed is sometime made up of soil or sediment and the other hand sometime it is made up of uh, a rocky material so the, the rocky material that one is called as a bedrock and with so much energy that river is carrying as it originates in the headwater it even has enough energy to cut through this bedrock so sometime it can cut through the bedrock and it can pick up even more sediments by causing erosion in the bedrock and this uh, erosion is enhanced by the particles carried in water so you can imagine this river stream right uh, so suppose this is a bedrock as it is uh, chipping uh, or causing uh, some chip on this uh, bedrock it is picking up this sediment in the stream so these uh, sediments which comes into the stream uh, they will now act as like a chisel like a hammer like a tool of the stream which will even further enhance uh, the process of erosion now these uh, broken sediments will act as a tool and that will even accelerate uh, the process of chipping or causing more and more damage uh, to the sediment so it's like a feedback mechanism as the volume of sediment grows that will further in, in, increase the rate of erosion and the increase of rate of erosion will further increase the volume of sediment so this will keep on increasing uh, the rate of erosion as the river goes downstream uh, so here is one example you can see this is a kind of a small pothole so when the stream flows over is the water is kind of trapped here and then it will start uh, depending on how much energy it is it can cause some swirling motion and as it is moving around in this part um, the the sediment which is trapped in this water it will cause damage uh, to this uh, edges of this pothole and that will cause even more erosion more sediment will be trapped in this uh, pothole so that will continue to accelerate the rate of erosion or damage to this um, uh, uh, to this bedrock or, or the landscape uh, so now we'll talk about these uh, different type of sediments so that was the first stage we just discussed about uh, sediment production now we will talk about sediment transportation so there are three types of sediments uh, in the stream first one is called dissolved load um, so this is the sediment which is dissolved in the water so as the chemical nature or signature of water changes as it is flowing downstream the temperature is changing it is picking up different chemicals from the surrounding landscape so that changes the chemistry of the water as the chemistry of the water changes that can trigger some dissolution 
of certain uh, species or certain rock or, or minerals which are present in the rock so so that will lead to some dissolved load, load present in, in the stream the second one is the suspended load and the third one is the bed load uh, so the bed loads are the heavy sediments which are sitting on the bed river does not have enough energy to pick it up in the in the river channel so they will be just rolling over so if this is your uh, stream so these are the heavy sediments so they are just rolling or hopping over so this is called a saltation movement where they are just uh, hopping over by the overflowing river stream on the other hand you have these uh, smaller sediments which remain suspended in the river channel uh, so those are called a suspended load uh, so now you have three types of uh, sediments present in the river stream one is dissolved another is suspended and the third one is bay, uh, bed load and between bed load and suspended load uh, bed loads are the heavier material that uh, or the heavier sediment that uh, uh, that the river cannot pick up in in, in the river uh, channel uh, the suspended loads are relatively lighter and smaller in size uh, so this is just you can think uh, uh, as uh, in the dry season as the river flows um, uh, it leaves behind this uh, all the sediment uh, right so this is your river channel uh, completely covered by these different sizes of sediment so as the river um, continue to flow uh, it will uh, have less energy and it will start depositing uh, uh, the, the heavier sediments first and the lighter sediments will be uh, deposited much later in the downstream uh, capacity and competence are the two terms related to uh, how much sediment the river or the stream can carry as it is moving down the stream so capacity is the maximum load of solid particles a stream can transport per unit time uh, so increases the discharge as there is more uh, water it will have more energy so it can carry more sediment so capacity is the volume of sediment uh, maximum load of so solid particles the the river stream can carry per unit time competence is on the other hand it's based on the size of the sediments uh, so competence is a stream's ability to transport particles based on size so that competence reflects that uh, what is the size of the sediment the stream can carry as it is flowing down the stream as flow decreases competence is reduced so because as the river is flowing down the stream it will have less and less energy because the landscape is becoming less and less steep uh, so now it has a uh, has a weaker weaker flow so now it has less energy to carry heavier sediment so now the competence will decrease because competence is based on the size of the sediment carried by the river system uh, natural sorting this is another very interesting term that comes up uh, during the river system as it is carrying these different sediment these different sediments they are colliding right with each other right so they will collide with each other as the sediments are carried over by the river system and longer they stay in the river system they will go through this uh, uh, longer um, period of uh, collision and attrition where they are uh, being becoming more uh, so in the beginning they are more like a, a rough edge right but over the time they will start to have a much rounder edge because of this collision between these sediments so they will start to get uh, more and more rounded as they go down a stream right and another thing is they will list also starts to become smaller as they go down the stream because they will undergo uh, the break down from larger pieces to smaller pieces as they collide with each other they will tend to break down into smaller and smaller sediments so the river stream will first drop okay uh, i was talking about um, uh, sorting so how does the stream sorts all different sediment that it is carrying so we know that uh, in the earlier stage the stream has more energy so it can carry heavier sediments easily 
and it can even create um, uh, larger sediments uh, due to erosion and as it comes into this uh, second stage of sediment um, transportation now it will start the sorting where as its uh, energy is declining it will start dropping these sediments so in different along its uh, downstream journey of the stream it will start dislodging or dropping these heavier sediments first and then the medium sized sediments and then finally during the stage of deposition the final or third stage where it will uh, deposit those very fine light sediments uh, in the form of delta so that is called as a natural sorting uh, done by the river stream alluvium is the sediments which is uh, produced by the river system carried by the that is river system and deposited by the river system those are called as alluvium alluvium is material deposited by a stream uh, so please remember that um, uh, term alluvium so that's what is going to make two different types of uh, um, stream bed one is a bedrock another one is a new alluvium uh, bed uh, here is just a review how do streams erode transport and deposit sediment streams erode by dislodging and lifting material from the channel or by abrasion Mm, this is the process of erosion stream transport sediment as dissolved load sediment load or bed load these are the three types of sediments that the sediment carries during the sediment transportation stage and then finally is a stream deposit sorted sediment when they reach critical settling velocity so the critical settling velocity is the velocity at which uh, uh, the sediments it starts to fall out of the river column into the river bed uh, so those are the settling velocity as the name indicates it's the velocity at which the sediments will start falling from river uh, column into river bed now we will look at different type of uh, uh, river channel based on the bedrock material uh, or the bed material of the river uh, what characterizes bedrock channel and what characterizes alluvial channel uh, so bedrock channels are those channels where uh, the bed of the river is made out of uh, rock uh, some kind of rock uh, bedrock channels are actively cut into solid rock alluvial channels are composed of unconsolidated sediment so uh, the bed is when it is made up of unconsolidated sediment then it is called as alluvial channel on the other hand when the bed of the river stream is made out of rock then it is uh, called as um, uh, a bedrock uh, channel uh, bedrock channels are cut into rock common in headwater and it is common in headwater because that is where uh, energy is 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 uh, the, the river has a lot of energy uh, in the steep gradient region so it can easily cut through the sediment and reach uh, into the bedrock or the rock uh, part of this um, uh, river bed uh, alternate between gentle gradient and steep gradient so think about uh, this is the region uh, where <coughs> you will have these uh, uh, alternate uh, region between gentle gradient and steep gradient so in the gentle gradient the uh, energy is low uh, the flow is not as rapid so it will deposit the sediment and on the other hand as soon as it reaches the steep gradient now it again has a lot of energy so it can cut into the bedrock and it will create a lot of sediment in that region so this is the region where you will have bedrock um, uh, channel uh, whereas on the other hand where the gradient is l is gentle it's not as steep you will have alluvium uh, channel uh, rapids and waterfalls are common in the bedrock channel uh, channel pattern is controlled by underlying geologic structure often winding and irregular uh, this is one example you can see that uh, this is more like a, a, a river fall uh, or a rapid uh, you can see here the water is rapidly flowing down a stream and as it is flowing it is causing abrasion or erosion on the bedrock and alluvium channels are composed of loosely consolidated sediment shape is controlled by average sediment size and and that can change uh, you know, over the time because as we discussed earlier uh, the size of the sediment or the competence of uh, the river channel it declines as it flows downstream uh, 
um, yeah, so two common types of alluvium channels one is meandering channel another one is braided channels uh, here is uh, meandering channels are those where the river turns into sweeping beds called meanders it has high suspended load it is deep and smooth channels uh, and banks are resistant to erosion uh, most erosion occurs on the outside of the meander or the cut bank where velocity is highest uh, sediment is deposited along the inside of the meander where turbulence and velocity are low forming point bars meanders migrate laterally and downstream may form a cutoff and ob oxbow lake through narrow necks of land so here is a schematic so this will explain everything just we uh, we talked about so this is how it um, the river flows so look on this uh, on the leftmost uh, figure here so this is your river channel and as it is flowing it is meandering it is flowing in these bends uh, so you can think about this you can draw it like uh, this uh, lots of meandering as it is flowing down a stream so what happens uh, i'll just draw this schematic here So this is your river channel right so what happens here as the water is coming in right around at this bend it will have lots of energy here and less energy here right so what will happen the sediment will start to deposit in this part in the inner bank of this channel whereas on the other side on this outer bank it will cause erosion because of higher energy so the same thing will happen here but now the flow will be much more faster on the outer bank and on the inner bank you will have deposition because the flow is slower here so you will have sediment deposited here sediment deposited here over the time but here this will continue to cut the the bank here so the bank will grow on this inner side and it will cut on the outer side the same thing will happen here whereas on the middle part on this part of the channel the maximum velocity is in the center of the of the channel so you can draw the the velocity map so look something like this so you have maximum velocity here in the middle of the channel and less velocity here on the edges of the bank but that is only in the straight part of the channel the curved part the outer bank will have erosion the inner bank will have deposition because you have much more velocity on the outer side if you draw the velocity map it will look like this higher velocity on this side lower velocity on the inner bank so the lower velocity region will see deposition because the stream cannot carry the sediment due to lack of enough energy but on the outer bank the lot of energy and the lot of sediment will cause the the erosion of these sediments so this is what it is showing here in this schematic as the time goes you can see here there is a lot of deposition and that will continue to grow and that will also kind of shift uh, the the meandering of this river over the time or over the years uh, so this will continue to and a time will come when the river cannot meander that convoluted path so it will start to cut around and it will find a much easier pathway so that will leave this oxbow lake uh, which is isolated now from the main uh, river stream so because this convoluted meandering is no longer sustainable for the river to go around this far and then come back meet with the channel so what will happen over the years uh, the river will just start this uh, find this uh, another uh, much easier path uh, to go down a stream so all of these uh, uh, meandered path will eventually cut off from the main river channel and the river channel will continue to grow in the straight path okay uh, braided channels are a complex network of converging and diverging channels formed where most of the stream load is coarse and discharge is variable. 
it is wide and shallow it is common at the end of glacier so this is one example of braided channel where the stream is just following uh, flowing down a stream uh, in, in a very random uh, like a braid of hair uh, you know uh, how they are tangled uh, next uh, one uh, one into uh, another so that is what the braided channel uh, looks like uh, think about a river or a stream nearby if you have a chance go around look at uh, econ river is the nearest one you can see how it is meandering how it is flowing uh, lots of time in the urbanized area uh, we make those uh, engineering structure to keep the river from meandering too much because if there is a residential area then you don't want to you don't want the river to meander too much to cause damage to the residential uh, residential neighborhood so we we generally create these boundaries uh, engineering structure around uh, uh, around these banks uh, to keep uh, river from meandering and cause r more damage to the bank of the of the river uh, what characterizes bedrock channels uh, uh, if it can cut into solid rock then it is called as a bedrock that is a steep gradients uh, uh, what characterizes alluvial channel it is composed of sediments it meanders or braided uh, we will just skip this section uh, section 3.8 And we will just go to cost accuracy. What comes after this? So we will skip all the 3.8, 3.9, and 3.10, and we'll just go to groundwater, which is 3.11. Yes. So this is what we will look at next, uh, groundwater and cost aquifer. Uh, 